I went to the Netherlands to pick up this BMW 735, it was a 1,500 mile round trip. Let's dive in. The problem is the engine is not building up oil pressure, most of the time the oil warning light was on. At that very moment I really had no idea what caused it. Let's strip all the plastic off and have a look inside. This is the 3.6 liter V8 with Valvetronic, the engine code is N62B36A. Before I go any further I want to do a compression test. I removed the coils and spark plugs, because I don't want to flood the engine I'm taking out the fuse for the fuel pump. This one. The results were disappointing, highest reading was only 175 pounds per square inch. Normal reading should be in between 190 and 200 pounds per square inch for this engine. This can be caused by the valves or even the piston rings. The oil filter is located in the oil pan, unlike other BMWs I've owned. Let's drain the oil and have a look at the filter. This doesn't look good, metal shavings in there and some bits of what seems to be liquid gasket. Mind you, it had an oil and filter change less than 1000 miles ago. Took off the air intake and removed the plastic valve cover. I'll show you how to do that when I take the other side off. Here you have a view of the Valvetronic system. Besides a positioning sensor and a stepper motor it's a fully mechanical system. How it works and what it actually does I will explain later on in this series when I take it apart. Something that drew my attention was oil in the throttle body. These engines are notorious for leaking valve seals so I have to look into that as well. I am going to take the engine out at this point, it has to be taken apart and I don't like to do that while the engine is in take car. Getting to the oil pump will be a nightmare. Headlights and bumper skin are already removed. Inner bumper bar removed as well as the cross support member. It's all screwed together and is really not much work to get it all out. Oh, you noticed. Two buckets of oil came out of the engine, it holds like two and a half gallons. Electric fan for the air could taken off. There is a lot of leaves between that and the condenser for the air coat. The lines you see in front of the radiator are used to cool the power steering oil. Time to drain the coolant. Now I can just get the holder with the radiator and condenser for the air go out and put it aside. In the red circle is the heat exchanger for cooling the gearbox oil. Now I have to undo all the vacuum hoses and the fuel lines, as well as the coolant hoses that run to the interior heater. That's done. 
Under the car I have to disconnect the exhaust on both sides. Disconnect the gear selector from the automatic transmission. And disconnect the prop shaft. Yes, I want to take out the gearbox at the same time because it is leaking. So engine and gearbox will be coming out as one unit. Unbolted the airco compressor from the engine. Since the condenser is still connected to the system I don't have to fill it again if I don't take the compressor out. Wiring, yes. Everything that has to do with engine and transmission management is in the e-box under the hood. It's a whole lot of wiring but every connector is unique so reconnecting is no big deal. Let's get disconnected. And there you have it. This is only the wiring going to the ECU and the gearbox management, except for some ground straps it will fully disconnect the engine from take car. After removing the bolts which hold the cross member of the transmission in place and the engine mounts it's finally time to get the hoist out. I made a wooden rail because the hoist won't roll very well in the gravel. This header, on the driver side of the engine didn't want to move past the steering box on the rack so it had to come out. You can see the two O2 sensors, before and after the catalytic converter. Slowly but surely the engine and gearbox are leaving the car, it is quite labor intensive when you're doing it on your own. Steady. Almost there. And there it is. Now the real work can begin. It does leave a whole lot of nothing behind in the car. Tied to the frame rail on the left of the picture you see the compressor for the air conditioning. Almost in the middle you can see I placed an axle stand to catch the prop shaft. The U-joint doesn't like a sudden impact from it falling down. I put the holder with the radiator and the condenser back where it belongs. That way I'm not enforcing any stress over a period of time to the lines and connections. Close the hood to protect the engine bay while I'm working on the engine and gearbox. That is it for this episode, next episode will be up in a week's time. Thanks for watching.